If you were to visit the Japanese port city of Shimonoseki in southwest Japan, it would be difficult to not see at least one image of Fugu. Shimonoseki's famous wharf is lined with colorful sculptures of pufferfish. Some are on the ground, while others are hung from wires as if they were swimming through the air. And if you look down at the street, you'll see a pufferfish sculpted onto the drain lid. Locally, it's known as fugu, and it's one of the most poisonous, yet sought-after foods in the world. Scholars believe early civilizations in East Asia probably began eating the fish out of necessity. Over time, it became a culinary staple of the region, particularly in Japan. In some areas of Japan, fugu is more popular than any other fish. Throughout Japan, Shimonoseki is known for being the capital city of this fishy delicacy where it is famously sold via auction at Heidomari Fish Market. However, fugu is enjoyed the most in restaurants with chefs who are licensed to serve the toxic fish. On any given visit to one of these restaurants, you can expect to spend some serious money to buy a fugu dish. The median price for a fugu course is $200, while other fugu sushi might cost anywhere from $20 to $65 for a plate. Of course, depending on the restaurant, prices can get much higher. Japan alone consumes an estimated 10,000 pounds of fugu every year. As you can imagine, back 10,000 years ago, the people living along the coastal areas of East Asia didn't have restaurants to dine in or commercial fishing boats to go get food for them. So, when regular fish was scarce, there was fugu. These early people plucked pufferfish right out of the water and tried them out, not knowing anything about the toxicity that's in them. But their bellies were empty and fugu looked like fish. In subsequent millennia, these coastal people began to build large civilizations centered around fishing, especially in Japan. These communities developed their own methods and theories of eating fugu safely, but that was no guarantee that it would always work. And in 1590, one Japanese feudal lord had had enough. Toyotomi Hideyoshi banned fugu during his unified reign in the late 16th century after his samurai kept dying from eating too much poorly prepared fugu. Or so the legend says. However, the alleged ban didn't stop Japanese people from eating fugu. And during the late 19th century, fugu bans were lifted in favor of laws and regulations, something which trained fugu chefs have down to a science. In Japan, and only in Japan, there are special schools where aspiring chefs can train to become licensed fugu prep cooks. According to Tokyo chef Nayuki Yanagihara, the chefs have just 20 minutes to practice a fugu preparation performance. If a chef presents your fugu with just a tiny drop of blood, there would be big trouble. That tiny drop is flowing with tetrodotoxin, a chemical 30 times more deadly than cyanide. That little drop would either send the customer to the hospital or somewhere much worse. Yanagihara recalls his testing somewhat fondly. He says the fugu used at culinary schools, something called training fugu, is used instead of regular fugu. The difference? Training fugu is far from fresh, and some of that fugu is even on the verge of rotting by the time trainees get their hands on them. The fragility of the past due fugu makes them very difficult to clean when compared to fresh fugu, which is prepped, aged, then served to customers. The rot also makes them cheaper. Training fugu can be bought for $10 per pound, while fresh fugu is at least $100 a pound. Yanagihara went on to say that when he passed and went home, he prepped and cleaned fresh fugu, noticing how much easier it is to clean the newer, more pliable meat. For Yanagihara, the process feels easy. But for other prospective fugu chefs, the odds of passing are less than 50% on average, and that's for trained chefs. The intensive training is supposed to ensure fugu is safe to eat. Because of the high demand for fish in Japan, the island has become the only source of legally clean fugu in the world. There are roughly 80,000 trained fugu chefs in the Japanese city of Osaka alone. For all the perceived hype around fugu, does it actually taste good? Or is it an acquired taste people pretend to like just so they can appear fancy? 
Of course, like most foods, fugu has its lovers and haters. The haters tend to complain that fugu is bland, chewy, and the small traces of poison makes their lips numb, whereas the lovers praise fugu for its fresh, non-fishy taste. First of all, fugu's flavor and texture greatly depends on how you cook it and whether or not you age the meat. One of the most popular styles to cook fugu is the chrysanthemum plate, where thin slices of fugu sashimi are laid out in the pattern and shape of a chrysanthemum flower. This plate is perhaps the most iconic version of fugu in Japan. Almost everyone who eats fugu sashimi describes the fish as lean and clean. The chewiness complaint is usually reserved for boiled fugu. Boiled or raw fugu is often paired with a dipping sauce, usually soy sauce. Another flavor component that many people claim to feel is numbness on their lips, supposedly from poison. However, any fugu chef in Japan will tell you that if your lips are numb while eating fugu, <laughs> you better call an ambulance before your airways close up. In other words, you would hope that getting numb lips is a placebo effect. Ironically, for a lot of diners, the fact that fugu is so deadly is why so many people try fugu while they're in Japan. It's a thrill. Like gambling, only instead of money, you're betting your life. At least, that's how outsiders view fugu, as a game of Russian roulette. In 1957, the popular James Bond novel From Russia with Love featured 007 nearly dying from some mysterious poison. It was later revealed to be fugu in the next book, Dr. No. Then there's the highly publicized death of well-known kabuki actor Bando Mitsugoro VIII, who believed he had developed an immunity to fugu. He ate four servings, and it turned out that he was very wrong about having immunity. His much-publicized passing in 1975 and Western media coverage of fugu hasn't been the same since. The New York Times published an article in 1981 with a headline that read, One man's fugu is another's poison. 35 years later, The Guardian wrote a headline asking, Last Supper? Followed by Japan's diners divided over killer puffer fish. In Japan, at least, the division and fear is apparently minimal, something that's evident on how much fugu is consumed by the Japanese every year. Interestingly, many Japanese fugu consumers tout the toxic fish as a type of superfood. Fugu is naturally lean and it's high in protein. But protein is not even the main health benefit. Collagen is. Before collagen powder and bone broth became health drains, people in East Asia were eating fugu which contains high concentrations of collagen in addition to its infamous poison. Collagen is a protein responsible for maintaining strong and elastic skin and musculoskeletal tissue, such as tendons and muscles. It also helps strengthen bone density, which helps people maintain strong bones as they age. Collagen can even help people from balding. Most of the collagen in fugu is from its skin. Though most fugu consumers go for the meat, people concerned with preserving youthful skin will go out of their way to eat fugu skin. Healthy foods are always going to be pricey, but in Fugu's case, there are economic reasons why Fugu costs so much. One of the biggest reasons is overfishing. In the past few decades, certain species that live on the sandy bottom of the East China Sea and areas around Japan have seen dramatic drops in Fugu population. Some species lost around 95% of the fish they had just over four decades ago. Besides the near destruction of certain species, overfishing of fugu has caused prices to go up sharply, something that's a lose-lose situation for everyone. The increasing demand yet lack of supply resulted in a burgeoning fugu fish farm industry. However, many fugu purists in Japan aren't fans of farmed fugu. They say farm-raised fugu simply doesn't taste the same as wild fugu. The Japanese demand for fugu will be there for the foreseeable future. As laws and regulations get tighter, attempting to alleviate overfishing, fugu farms seem to be the best option for future consumption. Farmed raised fugu are born with less tetrodotoxin, making them far safer to eat than their wild brethren. There is still, of course, the traditional aspect to fugu. Scientists have been discovering remnants of fugu at ancient sites in East Asia that go back millennia. It's something many other cultures simply can't relate to. As for the danger factor, most Japanese don't view fugu as the Russian roulette of food. 
They view it as a delicacy that's unique to their culture. To them, the risk is low and the reward is extremely important to their identity. Even though there are around 30 to 50 deaths a year in Japan attributed to fugu poisoning, the Japanese continue their over 4,000-year-old fugu legacy. There's a Japanese proverb that sums up fugu culture perfectly. The rough translation goes like this. Those who eat fugu soup are stupid. Those who don't eat fugu soup are also stupid. Click to watch one of these next videos. And let us know in the comment section if you would rather have to eat fugu or have to get shocked by an electric eel.